Okay, so you got yourself an old radio, and you and it doesn't need to be a CB radio. Actually, it doesn't even need to be a radio. It can be a TV or anything for that matter. But it's old. Um, and you're replacing the electrolytic capacitors. Now, some people like to restuff their capacitors. I personally don't do that, but I, by the same token, don't have anything against that. That's perfectly fine. If you want to keep the, uh, try to, uh, you know, maintain the original look of a radio or a television or something, I can see that. Um, now, granted, most people, <laughs> if you think about it, once you install them, you're probably never going to see them again until the next time you have to get inside of your equipment to actually work on it. But um, this is a word of caution the ways not to rebuild your electrolytic can caps. So, like I say, it's popular for some people to do that. I just use new caps. Um, now, you can even get custom ones made. Original can styles. Actually, let me grab a... show you the kind I'm talking about. So, you can get one of these brand spanking new. Manufactured today. Um, there are companies that do that. They'll build you a cap whatever you want. Now, they're not cheap. <laughs> it's the only thing. Custom stuff comes with the custom price. But it, they can be had. Twist, tie, lock, tabs, the whole nine yards. Um, but for the majority of radios, a lot of times what you can do is, reach over here to another drawer, you can just, a lot of times, substitute a modern can cap. Okay? Now the only difference is, this does not have the binding or uh, hold down tabs like the original can caps would have. So your normal old can caps had a mounting flange with four tabs around the outside edge and they were also the grounds. And then your terminals were all the positives. This modern cap, this is only a two section cap. So it has two positives and a negative. So they share the, the negative terminal and this is a two section 100 microfarad 500 volt cap. This is a common cap I'll use in this radio. Matter of fact, I might as well just leave it out and I will use that one in this radio. <laughs> um, now, a customer sent this radio in to, to be restored, have all the electrolytic capacitors replaced, old resistors, you know, the high wattage ones that are known for getting nuked. Uh, matter of fact here, almost done on the bottom side. So there's most of the resistors, the old carbon composition resistors, the smaller electrolytic capacitors. And I'm just about getting ready to call it quits for tonight, or I should say early this morning, and I get to looking at the can caps from the underside, and I get out the ESR meter, and I figure, well, I'll just test them, because I could see they had been rebuilt. So, what somebody did was, is they removed the entire can. Now, they didn't do, like, uh, if you ever watch Buddy over at the radio shop, he will bend the flange back. Actually, let me grab an original old style again. It's a very painstaking process, but you bend this flange back, the whole way around where it's crimped very carefully. It's the time-consuming process. Bend that flange back, heat the can up, the hair dryer, so, you know, hot air reflow iron or something, because um, there's tar in there, and then you can pull out the inside. So this, this part here is usually steel, the actual mounting ears. That's another little piece, and that's held in by that crimp. And then you can get the, the guts out, and then you can restuff it. Most people will just use modern radial-style electrolytic capacitors to install in them. You can use axials, radials, whichever, or combinations, you know, to come up with whatever you need. Um, this person, on the other hand, did it a different way. And I've seen it done this way, too. You just take a, basically, a hacksaw, and you just cut right at this bump line, basically. Just slice the whole way around it, and then they'll glue it back together. And that's what they did. Now... I also noticed that they were kind of loose. You could grab the cans and wiggle them, and and I'm not talking about the entire can. The top would wiggle, but the base wouldn't. So, yeah, they weren't glued too tight. So, and then, I, like I say, I've, I've tested them from the underside with an ESR meter, and I get to one, and yeah, the values just aren't looking too good, and the one is open. It doesn't measure as a capacitor at all. One of the 40... Uh, I think that was the 40, yeah, the 40 microfarad, that's actually one I got here to show you. The uh, 40 microfarad can cap has three three sections at 450 volts. Only two of them show any capacitance. One was completely open. 
Um, the 10 microfarad sections were, yeah, they were okay. But, so, yeah, they're going to get replaced. Now, the, the customer had said they had been redone. But I didn't do it, so I'm going to check. <laughs> and I'm glad I did. Um, so, I got the 10 microfarad can cap off, and I... Because it's coming out, it's not getting restuffed. Brand new can caps are going in, so I figured, well, I'll pull it apart and see what they use. So what they used was radials and the 10 microfarad can cap. So that's what they stuck in there: 10 450 volt can caps. Um, and looking at the date codes, it looks like these are probably 2000. What the heck did I see? Is it three or four? Oh, where in the hell is it? There it is. 2004. It looks like, um, but they're only. 85 degrees C. Yeah, if I'm putting a can cap in a in a uh, tube type radio, it's going to be a 105 degrees C cap like this one. <laughs> so that's what these are rated for. Um, I do that because it's a tube radio. You've got big tubes around here. As a matter of fact, you've got a really big tube sitting here. And yeah, it's just and heat kills capacitors. So you got to watch the temperature ratings. Um, but when I got to, and all I did was just grab the can and just kind of wiggled it back and forth, and yeah, the leads just popped right off. And I can see the leads, yeah, they're not looking too healthy. Well, when I got to the larger cap, which actually only has three sections, but they're 40 microfarad, again, I wiggled it and boop, it popped off. And I can see why the one was open. I do not know what kind of, well, and it's not glue, it almost smells, it smells like tar. But it's not, at least it reminds me, of some type of asphalt-based tar or something like that. It's black, um, but it's hard. Really, really, really hard. Uh, usually tar is even, you know, once it's cooled down, is still kind of soft. This is, I mean, rock hard, as in you can chip off flakes of it. So I don't know what it is, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this. But the leads, I'm assuming what's inside of this... Is basically what they had here and I don't know what the hell this other this white dusty stuff it looks like sand to me <laughs> it was I mean it just poured out of this cap it's like he filled it with sand I again I don't know I didn't do it <laughs> but this one uh, I don't know if you can really see the leads or not you can see the little stubs sticking out I gotta get it in the light so I can see the damn thing there's one there there's one there sticking up and the other one Oh, where in the hell is it? You know, it's way down in there. But if you look at this one that's kind of long, it's sticking up right there. I don't know if I can get it, the camera to focus. Eh, it's not going to now. <laughs> I got it all confused, waving stuff in front of it. It's all corroded. And it looks like that's what happened to that lead that's way down in there that's broke off. I can see it. It looks like it's just corroded down to a you know tiny thin piece of wire, and it's just it just corroded in half. I don't know what they used. <laughs> so, my advice is, if you're going to rebuild can caps, watch what you're putting in the can caps that comes in contact with the wires. Uh, something else I should almost do is is do an insulation resistance test on this. So I've got a high voltage. I've got a meter that's in power supply that's designed for doing that measuring um it's actually designed for testing wire insulation resistance <laughs> but the, i'd be curious to see maybe this stuff's even conductive i really don't know because it's corrosive so yeah lord only knows so when you if you restuff your can caps once you get you know a package and this is a good example now granted not with all this goop but what most people will do is they'll get their caps, just put a piece of tape around it to hold it together. Um, I've actually done a few over the years. Like I said, I don't like doing it. It's just, yeah, I'd rather just use a new can cap to start with. But, or buy one that's already made, custom made. You know, if somebody's going to pay you to rebuild a can cap, they'd probably pay to have you know, one, a new one made. But uh, hot glue. Hot glue works wonders. It's non-conductive, non-corrosive, it's pretty much inert, and it holds really good. And this is a perfect use for it. So when you get your capacitors together, like in the case of this when you have four of them, just put one like one wrap of electrical tape around it, just to hold it together. Um, 
pour, and take your hot glue gun and just squirt some hot glue down in the middle of them. As soon as that stuff sets up, shoot, you could probably just take the black tape off around the outside. They're, they're going to be glued together for life. Slide them down in the can. And again, squirt a little bit of hot glue in around, you know, around each of the gaps to hold the cap down in there. Um, and then fish your leads through your bottom insulation plate here, you know, the fiberboard, the original base to the capacitor, feed them up through, wrap them around the original terminals on the underside, which is what this person did. Their downfall was they let whatever this black stuff is actually come in contact with the wires. And yeah, it's apparently corrosive. So like I say, these can cat or these these radial caps here looks like they're date codes 2004. Um, so I'm going to assume the caps that are in here are probably from 2004 or newer. So yeah, that's honestly not a really long time. I mean, granted it's 2017, but still, uh, it's not like we're talking 30 years. Yeah, and from 2004 to now, it's corroded the wires off. So. Yeah, be careful. When you're rebuilding can caps, make sure you use something that's you are guaranteed 100% sure it's not conductive if it's going to touch the wires, um, and, you know, the leads on the caps that you're using, and make sure it's not corrosive. <laughs> like I say, nowadays, hot glue is a pretty safe bet. But even then, try not to glue directly to the terminals. Glue the cans, those capacitors, into your can, but don't glue around the actual leads. Unless you're using something like a, a high high voltage potting epoxy or silicone that you know for a fact is rated for direct contact with wires and is non-corrosive. So there's just a few tips because yeah, this person, whoever who, whoever did this, if they had done it properly these probably would still be fine. If they hadn't used whatever this was that ate one of the leads off one of the wires, this can now, granted, I still would have replaced it, but, uh, you know, it, it would, would have lasted for a considerable amount more time. You know, they are niche cons, granted, like I say, they are 85 degree C, they're not, they're not 105 degree C caps, which I'd prefer to see, but, uh, you know, and, and man, it's a shame. They took the time <laughs> cutting the cans open, polished them, nice shiny aluminum. But yeah, they they did good and they did bad. <laughs> so just a word of caution. Watch the adhesive you use 